Hussein is a man whose story has transcended generations and borders for over 1300 years. Hussein's selfless pursuit for moral justice in the face of brutal oppression has inspired hope for millions. The Battle of Karbala, where Hussein and his 72 loyal companions bravely stood against an army of thousands, forever changed the course of history. Hussein was born in 626 AD in the city of Medina to the noble family of the Prophet Muhammad. He was raised by a family renowned for their honesty, compassion and justice. He was revered and celebrated by people from different walks of life. Every lover of truth and every lover of justice loved Hussein alayhi salam. And this, no doubt, began way back while they were in the holy city of Medina. The values that he adopted as a child were the values that he learned as he grew up. And he grew up in the, the holiest of houses. He grew up with his grandfather, the prophet. As a young child, Hussein witnessed his grandfather's struggle to establish a morally just and compassionate society. They embraced a very sincere life, a very humble life. They prioritized charity, giving and working to improve the societies they were in. Arabian society was plagued by violence and corruption. Muhammad's rise and the advent of Islam eradicated much of this injustice and the people had widely adopted a moral way of living. In 632 AD, the Prophet Muhammad passed away, devastating a young Hussein. What followed after would impact Hussein in ways he could not yet comprehend. Shortly after the Prophet's death, the leadership of the newly formed nation fell into dispute. Divisions amongst the people emerged, and a violent power struggle fractured the nation for over 30 years, which led to a lengthy civil war between Hussein's father Ali ibn Abi Talib and Muawiyah. Muawiyah, who was originally from a tribe uh, or a clan which was, had in the early years opposed the Prophet's message and Islam, and took power, um, started off in his power base in Syria, in Damascus. Ali ibn Abi Talib was assassinated and Muawiyah assumed full control. Choosing to avoid further conflict, Hussein's elder brother, Hassan, made a treaty with Muawiyah, which would prevent Muawiyah from passing on rule to his son, amongst other things. These clauses of the truce were basically violated, and the ultimate expression of that violation was the actual assassination of Hassan himself uh, around 10 years after that. Having violated the treaty, Muawiyah allowed his son Yazid to take over the power. Yazid was widely regarded as a tyrannical and cruel narcissist who wanted to rule with an iron fist. Yazid sought the allegiance of Hussein to cement his claim to power and gain credibility. One of the needs one can say of an oppressive regime is the need for legitimacy. And the important sources of that legitimacy has to come from prominent members of the society who are respected for their high morals to support them. Having witnessed years of injustice and the steady moral decay of his society, Hussein knew he had to draw a line with Yazid to prevent the total collapse of the nation to the hands of a despotic tyrant. Hussein refused to pledge allegiance to Yazid. In one sense, he was very divisive, but Usually when people fight for justice, they are divisive. Usually it divides the community, those in favor of what is right and those who are not. And so in his very divisiveness, he was really making a stand that separated the good from the bad, the just from the unjust. Fundamentally, Hossein is not interested in the fight. He's not interested in, in uh, taking to battle, but rather he's interested in um, making people aware of what's actually going on in the world. Um, how things have changed since the demise of the Prophet. 
Not being able to get an endorsement from Hussein, Yazid threatened to assassinate Hussein. Wanting to avoid violence, Hussein left his home and travelled to the city of Mecca. Here, Hussein sought to rally the people and delivered a passionate sermon rebuking the community leaders who had failed to stand against Yazid, saying, You have taken lightly your duties as leaders. You have neglected the rights of the oppressed and the lowly, but have assiduously pursued what you regard as your personal rights. His moral justice was quite a simple issue. It was that we must be willing to take a stand and even die for what is right, that there can be no compromise. And I think it's that refusal to compromise, and he was made a number of offers by the, the people in power to compromise, to turn back, to try a different route. This, this refusal to compromise, even in the face of great personal danger, that for me is the key to the morality, the, the, the ethics of his justice. Most leaders, they will remain in their comfort zones and send their people to go and do their work. They will call for justice, but they will not be on the ground or in the field to promote justice. Imam al Hussein did not do that. Imam al Hussein alayhi salam led from front. Hussein had received hundreds of letters from the residents in the city of Kufa, present day Iraq, pledging their support in the struggle against Yazid. As the threat of violence increased, Hussein departed from Mecca, along with his family and loyal companions and began the long journey towards Kufa. When Yazid became aware of Hussein's intention, he dispatched a brutal governor to quash the descent. But Hussein persisted with his movement eastward. As Hussein got closer to Kufa, he was intercepted by a battalion of Yazid's army led by a commander called Hur. Hussein his family and companions were prevented from going any further and were forced to stop in a dry desert land known as Karbala. Hur and his entourage of forces came. His horses and his soldiers were thirsty. Hussein offered them water. He did not say, these people are here to monitor me and to make life difficult for me and to block my way, he gave them water. Hussein's selfless act of kindness was to be met in turn with a cruel response by Yazid's army, who proceeded to surround Hussein's camp and cut off the water supply. Hussein, his family and small army of around 72 were left thirsty for three days in the blistering heat. Hussein said something which rings very true for the human condition. He said, human beings are slaves to the world. As long as our situation is fine, we have food, we have water, we have money, we have the basics, people will profess their beliefs, they will profess their religion on their tongues. But when people are tested, when people are tried, very few people remain who are sincere and devoted. On the eve of Ashura, Abba Abdullah guided all his companions. And he asked for the candle to be switched off. So it was put off. And he said to his companions, I am the target. You are not the target. Why don't you go? and no blame on you. Each and every one of them stood up and pledged their allegiance to Abu Abdullah Hussain alayhi salam. As the sun dawned on what is known as the day of Ashura, Hussein and his brave army of 72 prepared to make their final stand of honor and dignity against an army of thousands. In a remarkable turn of events, Hur defected from Yazid's army, realizing that he had made a terrible mistake and pledged to fight alongside Hussein. Unafraid and fueled by belief in something greater, Hussein's companions fought relentlessly till their very end. 
Each of these members of his family went out one by one, often reciting extraordinary poetry and dying one by one in front of Al Hussein and all of them as they went out to fight claiming the reason why they were doing this, that it wasn't just because they liked him but because they believed in his cause. In the heat of battle and despite witnessing the horrific killing of his close friends, Hussein would be heard praying for his enemies, hoping they'd cease partaking in this atrocity. One after the other, Hussein's closest family members were slain in battle as they fought heroically. With each member of his family killed in front of him, including his beloved sons, nephews and brother, Hussein would rush valiantly into the battlefield to aid them in their last moments. None were spared, not even Hussein's six-month-old baby, Ali Asghar. Imam Hussein carried this young boy, placed him on his chest, and he walked to the battlefield. He looked at the camp of the enemies. He called out, am I the target of this infant? Why don't you give him water? And this created a consternation in the opposing army. And when the leader, uh, Omar ibn Sa'ad, saw that, he called out for them to silence Hussein's argument, meaning to kill that child. And so uh, one uh, very evil soldier, whose name was Hormala, you know, took a, a three-pointed arrow and fired at the child and ripped the child's neck apart in the arms of the father. He was now completely alone. Everyone else was gone except for the woman in the tents and they were being threatened. And I think that in the end, uh, he, it was his utter exhaustion from fighting almost single-handedly that, that helped to hasten his end and the fact that he was now surrounded by a superior number. Up until the last breath he had, in the midst of all of this, he never lost hope. Some of the uh, re reports from the soldiers fighting against Hussein, uh, when they saw him pass by in front of them on his horse fighting them, they said they never saw a person who had lost so much, you know, his dear ones killed in front of him, facing insurmountable odds, covered with blood, but at the same time being so peaceful and so glorious. Carrying his lifeless infant alone, Hussein returned to his camp to bid a final farewell to the women and children of his family. Unbroken and unafraid, Hussein charged valiantly for the final time towards the enemy and fought majestically till eventually he fell from his horse. They started attacking him left and right. Arrows on his shoulders, arrows on his forehead, arrows on his back until Abu Abdullah fell down. He was kicked left and right and eventually Shimmer sat on his chest. Covered in bloody wounds, thirsty from the dry desert heat and with no one left to help him, Hussein was mercilessly beheaded. After the killing of Hussein, those who'd been killed were beheaded. The tents of the women were burnt. The women were, were taken as, as prisoners. The texts tell us that the women and the children were transported in a very um, brutal manner um, to the various leaders of the time, first of all to Kufa and then to Damascus, where they were humiliated and interrogated. But of course it is the Lady Zainab who cannot be separated from her brother, who keeps all of this alive and begins to retell the tale. And so it's, it's a terrible time and it's the beginning of something absolutely wonderful. Following the tragic killing of Hussein, his sister Zainab carried the flag of Hussein's mission and became the moral support for the women and children who had been taken captive. Famously, when asked how she perceived what had transpired, she replied eloquently, I saw nothing but beauty. 
She makes these two famous protests against the citizens of Kufa and then um, against Yazid. Um, and, and, and she is famous that not only does she denounce his leadership and indict uh, him as a person, but she also in those moments begins the story of Karbala and ensures at that moment that the story will never be forgotten and that the lessons of Karbala will never be forgotten. Zainab's fiery speech in the courtyards of Yazid sent shockwaves across the nation as word spread of how Hussein and his small army were martyred in Karbala. Realising his grave miscalculation, Yazid freed Hussein's family. Zainab, alongside Hussein's last remaining son, Ali Zain al Abidin, began to tell people of what happened in Karbala. This triggered a series of uprisings, which eventually led to Yazid's rule being dismantled. For a number of people, the commemoration of Hussein is also about this quest for justice and goodness in the world. And so the recounting of the story of what happened is then connected with um, accounts of oppression, of tragedy and of brutality in the world that we have, and a hope and desire for something better. The story of Hussein has been remembered through generations every year as a source of empowerment in the fight for moral justice. How Hussein and his army of 72 were victorious against a tyrannical enemy through sacrificing their lives. 1300 years later, millions of people from all backgrounds flocked to pay tribute to Hussein at his shrine in Iraq. Every time we stand up to fight and we are prepared to sacrifice everything for truth, we are like Hussein. The reason why people can aspire to be like Hussein is because he transcends religious borders and political borders. Justice is a human thing. All human beings, even non-religious human beings, are bound by justice. The revolution continues. We have to create now a, a Husseini society, which is a society of justice and a society of, of brave people you know, who are not afraid of fighting for truth. <laughs>